viewers, this is um, TNA Park. But of course, I'm sure you'll be wondering whether this is the TNA Park you knew. Uh, Gofield's Ghana Foundation is upgrading the facility and it, it's completely a new scene altogether. We're here to give you insight as to the progress of work, how far they've gone and the date of completion among other details. I have with me here two gentlemen. Um, Mr. Roger Adama, yes. he works with GoFills Ghana. Uh, what's your designation? I'm in charge of projects. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Salisu Ibrahim. Salisu, okay. From Mikleti. Okay, so I'm you are in charge of the, of the site engineer. Site engineer. Exactly. Okay. So they are going to take us round and tell us uh, how it started, how far they've gone, and when uh, this pitch is expected to be put to good use. We started this project somewhere in the latter part of uh, 2019. Um, that's most like November, December. Um, this project is actually one of the projects that got affected um, by the, the COVID pandemic. Um, with all the challenges, we, we managed to still sail through. And um, obviously, you can see the work here. It's, it wasn't um, an easy work. It's a lot of um, work that we had to do. In terms of completion, we are was around 93%. And um, for the remaining works, we are expecting to complete this project end of March 2024. Um, basically, there have been some challenges up and downs, but I mean, it comes with every project of this magnitude. And um, probably delve into some of those uh, details um, when, when, when we sit down. But we've, we've had a tremendous um, um, impact on the on the local community here, especially with employment, with procurement, and the statistics are there, you know. And um, also had a bit of uh, skill transfer because Mikileti actually is uh, headquarters in um, Accra, but they had to get a lot of the artisans here and get some of their specialist guys who they worked with. So, in terms of skill transfer, we believe we've had a lot of uh, skill transfer for the people in the local community. And obviously employment, because a chunk of the workforce here actually are from Takwa. So we can start with the pitch. Um, in terms of um, design, you know, we've, we've, we've had challenges on this pitch. And it's one of the reasons why we also actually um, went beyond our expected day of um, uh, delivery. We, we had unsuitable material on the, on the ground. And when it happens like that, you, you have to stabilize the ground. So what you see here, if you go down, you have a lot of big boulders. You have drainage pipes. You have, and these drainage pipes are placed at almost every two and a half meters in the form of a fish tail. You have drains all around the pitch. And the whole thing is that once the water soaks, it gets access into the drains and off you take it out of the pitch. In terms of the build-up, you know, you have borders and then you cascade it into bigger, smaller, finer piece so that you have proper filtration um, in terms of um, uh, percolation. The sand used here, there's some sort of special sand that you can use for a football pitch. And we had to go through form of testing to be sure the borrow pits that we pick from. And this, this comes from somewhere around the Zima area. area. So we had to haul all this material wow. from there just to make sure that we get the right um, blend of, of uh, topsoil for the grass. And um, obviously, you can see the nature of the grass. You know, for a football pitch, you don't want something very tough. Yeah. You want something that is very accommodating. So currently, our uh, expected maturity date for the grass itself is somewhere much. Okay. And that's what is actually driving a lot of the, the schedule that we, are, we okay. are talking about here. Uh, in terms of measurement, I mean, look, it's, it's standard. We've had um, some external... FIFA standard? Yeah, it is. You know, um, recently we had some members from um, CAF who came to do an inspection. We've had um, uh, members from GFA. Uh, the GFA president himself have been here. And uh, so what we do is, as part of our stakeholder engagement, we try to get all stakeholders on board. So you've had GFA, you have the referee association, you have the, um, you have 
CAF have come here and other stakeholders in the industry when it comes to football. And so what you see here, I uh, wish you had come earlier on and uh, you'd have seen the, the work that has, that has gone in here. When, so, when you mentioned the underground pipes, one thing that crossed my mind um, was um, maintenance. Yeah. This is a public facility. Yes. Uh, how sure are we that the National Sports Authority will be able to maintain this pitch? Because this might be the, if I'm not mistaken, the only pitch in Ghana with underground pipes. I, I can't tell for a fact, <laughs> but for a fact, I know that we've, we've put in a lot of work um, to, to get it the way it is. Uh, when it gets to maintenance, you see it's, it's, um, it's, it's an area that we are treading cautiously. And I must say that as part of the handing over for this project, we are actually going to develop maintenance plans and then also indicate when things have to be maintained, renovated or refurbished. And um, as you know, the genesis of this project, it's, it's obviously for the community, but the handover is going to be to the municipal assembly and obviously they're going to also manage it um, with, the, with the sports uh, authority. Okay. So for us, it's, it's, it's like a bipartisan thing and then um, the maintenance issues will continue. But you probably hear some of that in the press uh, sorry, uh, this, this morning. Okay. But it's something that is very critical, like you said. And as much as possible, we also try to put in um, a facility that, you know, you look into maintenance as well. And just to show you what you've done here, if you look at the, the structural steel, this is a hot dip galvanized steel. So looking at the area we are and the humidity. At the white stand there? Eh? No, everywhere. Okay. The, the metal, the um, um, you would say a pillar. Yeah. So yeah. columns and yes. the, the, the trusses. A layman the, like me would say yes. a pillar. <laughs> <laughs> so all this steel is actually hot dip galvanized steel. Okay. And we had to import this from Vietnam. So it's anti-rust? It's anti-rust. Okay. So just to make sure that you don't have a lot of maintenance that you have to do uh, um, on that. If you look at the roof itself, I mean, we went for one of the thickest, uh, thickness, uh, like biggest thickness you can have. So that's also something that will also help. Even with the rust on the roof and all that, we've had warranty from the contractor to indicate how long it can take before you can obviously go spray or paint it. So there are a few others looking at the seats. The Sorry to cut you. Seats, um, yeah. Having mentioned the roof, yes. that brings to mind the worker who died on site whilst working on the roof. How much of an impact did it have with respect to the delay of the project? No, so uh, the point is that for every project, once you have an incident or an accident, it's very necessary to fall back and then um, look at what you are doing wrong. Before the accident, I must say, we, we, we worked over a million, a million man hours without any injury. And obviously, uh, you, you can tell that complacency came in. And um, some of those things actually affected us um, in that sense. So you, you can't rush it after that. You need to fall back and then reassess all the work you are doing. Because the last thing you want is to rush to start and then pick another injury. And the last thing for a, a, a project manager or a construction company is to see someone die. Okay. It's, it's not, I mean, we, we can do whatever we want to do, but you, you kill someone on a site, it's, it's unpardonable. Yeah. I know there are uh, uh, root causes and all yeah. that. I've gone through all that issue and then put in mitigation factors and also try to get external people to also have a look so that, um, if there's something we couldn't pick up, then they could pick up. Okay. So this delayed us for almost uh, more than eight weeks, nine weeks, but it's, it's, it was necessary for us to do okay. that. I asked in relation to the timing because um, to the ordinary football fan on the street, the assumption was that, oh, the project will be completed before MDMS uh, Champions League competition, they, so they could assess the pitch. But if you're looking at the schedule, practically it is not possible. Yes, I must say it is, it's, it's, not, um, it's not, I mean, if you want to put on an engineer cap and, and look at the work left and the shadow we have and the activities and um, all the things we have to do, I mean, it's, it, um, you, you, you cannot say that you finish this pitch in December. So that is, that is, that is a fact, right? Okay. 
and um, also coupled with the fact that we, we need to be very cautious. I mean, after this accident, you don't want people to come. Already, some are still feeling that because they worked with the guy. And so there's no need to actually rush this work. No matter what it is, the stadium will still be completed. And um, we want to complete it well, on a good note, without any accident again, and get the quality right so we don't finish this pitch and you have issues. Especially with the grass. You know, if it's not matured and you, you actually tamper with it, you, you actually finish it. Yeah. Right. And it becomes very difficult to revamp it. Probably may have to take everything out. So it's necessary that we wait and get the right maturity. Necessary that we make sure that the rest of the work left, we do it safely and then we do it professionally and then also we get the quality right. Okay. So that 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 are the underlying fact. You know? Okay. But look, we've we've had other opinions to see how we can do this work, maybe in a, another better way yeah. and, and go faster. We are all on board. I mean, no one wants to sit on the project for years and not finish. So we, we take a cognizance of all that um, as well. Okay. So that's that's the main. Uh, okay. We, we, I think we've had uh, quite substantial information on the on the grass and the pitch. Uh, what else are we talking about? So in terms of the facility, um, like I said, see, we try to, uh, we, we, we obviously are not trying to do anything ordinary. Uh, this is GoFills. I mean, we, we are all for quality and then we also look at um, opportunities where we can improve um, 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 on our infrastructure. So there's a lot of thoughts that went into this uh, project. It's actually being managed by um, another consultancy firm. So that is the importance we have put on this project so that you have a broad spectrum of knowledge to get the specs right and then also what we need to do. You look at the stands for instance, um, you see we have speakers all, all around. Those are the speakers. So these are public oh, speakers. Public address, address system. system. Okay. So then oh. at any point if you want to it never occurred give to me. any announcement, it's easy to give uh, be loud information. Enough. And then also we've made a room for uh, Wi-Fi. Oh. So even at the point where you sit here, it's easy to have wow. access to internet. Okay. And um, obviously they, it's something that will be managed. Um, but all the, the wiring and all the, the things we need to put in place to, to, to get that going, it's, it's all that. Yeah. And obviously you have the lights. So what we'll do is also to put in, um, we'll have floodlights. So if it's a night game, they can also uh, play football. Okay, but the floodlights are yet to be fixed. They are yet to be fixed. Okay. I mean, this is work at height, and um, it's one of the 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 the, the, the critical uh, works uh, currently that we are looking at. You know, so if you look at one of the critical works of the stadium, it is. So we need to be very cautious. But okay. we haven't started it yet. Okay. But okay. It's something that is in progress. Okay. And once we finish with all the other paperwork. Okay. And also. Just to mention, in that corner, um, in that corner, you have a digital um, scoreboard. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. So that's a digital scoreboard. Okay. Yeah. That's a wow. digital scoreboard. So wow. So yes. And then obviously, yeah, for security-wise as well, we have cameras all over in the stands, which is directed straight to the control room. So with the TVs there, you can monitor oh. all around the stadium. We have some outside, and we have cameras in the stands wow. so you can zoom in anywhere and not necessarily with um, the, the the tv camera that that will be positioned oh. so those are some of the, the things we have uh, put in oh so it meets every international standard for a yes, football game yeah, that, that was our intent and um, for right from inception we've actually involved all stakeholders when it came to drawing up the scope for this project so you talk about the sports authority, you are talking about um, the municipal assembly, you are talking about, um, like I spoke of, some of the football authorities in the country where we had to also seek their consent. And obviously we picked a um, uh, professional engineering firm to look at that for us as well. So it's, it's went through certain stages and certain passes before we finally said, this is the scope that we are going to implement. And obviously, we, we look at um, um, other aspects of um, 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 ESG now that we have to consider. You know? So these are all things that we have to factor okay. into the stadium. Le let at, me, um, sorry, sorry. Um, 
sorry to cut you. Yeah. Let's look at the seating capacity. Yeah. I know it is 10,400. Yes. Um, how much of the 10,400 is uh, for VVIP, VIP, popular stand, center line? Do we have the no, details? We have them. So for, for the, the, this is a gold stand. So we've, we've actually mapped it out in two stands. And, um, the whole idea was to look at our national colors. So you have mm -hmm. the gold stand. Okay. You have, uh, so the gold stand, which is, okay, the Ghana flag is red, gold, so, green. So that's our gold. Okay. So we pick something from there. Okay. If you come to gold fields, you know, we have the yellow stand. We, we, we are for gold. Okay. You understand it? And obviously, the white and blue, more of a neutral thing. So okay. you have gold, um, you have yellow at this side, you have blue, and then you have white. Oh. Right. So the gold stand alone is taking almost about... Um, a little over 3,800 people. Okay. Yeah. So out of that... Um, okay, I understand. Yeah. That's your interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you, you have... Each seat have... We, we can actually get a detailed breakdown. But okay. for each, each, each of them, we have uh, the okay. capacity. Okay. And then you so are looking at the... The so VVIP. The, the red is the VVIP. The red up there. So mm -hmm. we'll go closer. I'm sure you can have a okay. view at there. So, in, so, what you see there, where the glasses are, the, mm -hmm. are the, the, let's say the, the next floor from this one, mm -hmm. with the red seat. So that's the that's the presidential. Okay. Presidential stand. Okay. Where the glasses. Oh, okay. Go there, you have a better view. You have about thirteen uh, seats over there. Oh, and okay. we've, we've protected it with glass as well. So, and then it's, 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 it's air conditioned. Presidential so stand. Presidential stand. Wow. So that's for, for VVVIP, you can put it that okay. way. Okay. And the red stands, the red seats are the VVIP. Okay. And then the yellow ones are the VIP. Okay. And just because of the control we have to assess this side. So this whole stance is VIP. But it's categorized into the presidential, the presidential stand, the VVIP, the VVIP and, and the, the VIP. VIP. Okay. Right. So that's what you see there. Okay. We can um, actually go and uh, have a better view of okay. like that. So, so the, this this wing of the, um, the stadium mm -hmm. is actually where you have almost all the facilities. Okay. I mean the the gold stand, which is a VIP sitting area. So at the top, you have the press, the last floor. The last floor is actually for the press. So that's where you have the, the TV, you have um, radio, you have um, oh, okay. uh, newspaper. Up, up the no, presidential? The red, yes, up the presidential. Okay. This one, the one okay. with the curved glass. Okay. Oh, okay, for radio and TV for radio, commentary. radio, TV, commentary, okay. and all that. Okay. And in there as well, you have room for press conferences. Oh. You have um, the control room where I mean, all the for feed broadcasting comes to, including the the, the, the data and, 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 and the camera and all that. So you have washrooms at the top floor. So in terms of you, the <laughs> journalist, <laughs> we've been catered for. We we have fully catered for for you, and then also looking at this side of the facility and the, the security and all that, because it's controlled. And so it's not easy for anyone to come into the, the gold stand. For the next floor, that's where you have the um, presidential um, uh, seats. You have a, a lounge there for them. You have washrooms. And even that, we have also separated the VVIP from the presidential lounge. So there's a control. At any point, we want them to be together, that's fine. At any point you want to separate the two, each wing has its own washroom, right? If you come to the basement, which is the, um, um, the changing rooms and then the, the, the prep up rooms and all that. So the whole idea was because of constraint of space, we had to go underground. Basement. More or less a basement to okay. put the change rooms and then also other facilities. Oh, okay. So all the uh, dressing rooms are underground? Are underground. 
that's nice. And underground, and we've also made enough provision to take any water from there. I wish you could have seen the construction and what we put in place. So in there, we have the doping room, we have the first aid rooms, we have the referees' own rooms with washrooms separate. You have the match commissioner, you have a deputy match commissioner, you have the kit room, you have the warm up area, there are changing rooms, washrooms, and other offices. So once we go down, you, you would see all these facilities. But we, we actually had this in mind to make sure that it conforms to um, international, international standards. standards. And then, most especially, with the CAF uh, Standard. standards. So, to start off from here, So you see, this is the level of the road. Mm. That's, that's the main road. You see people walking there. And we went down here. Okay. Just to have that room, enough space to put... To the get the basement. And all that. Oh, okay. So a lot of digging took place. Took place, yes. We had to dig and put in boulders, under drains. I mean, a lot of work had to go in here. And that's one of the, the challenges we had at the beginning of the project as well. Because once we started, we realized that the ground was not stable. Now we had to dig more than enough, backfill, stabilize the ground, and then also do a system of, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, construction where um, you can actually have the building mm. sit and float on this um, uh, part, more on, of a part. On the lighter side, did you get some gold here? Ah, <laughs> we, we do construction. <laughs> you know, all over Takwa, I, don't, I think when you pick uh, uh, soil from the streets, you still get some gold. So it's possible, but our focus was on construction. So this way, so the team buses come that way and that way. And okay. what we've done is to... So all the frontier is shielded. Once okay. the team bus comes in, it's closed. Okay. And we have a drive-through for VVIPs as well. They okay. drive through, they go out. But the team buses are shielded. You see that we have a solid block wall. Okay. And so once the bus parks, it stays there till the game is completed. You see that wall there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so, then so that will be the entrance? To that side. Okay. And then this park. Okay. This is the entrance to the v VVIP. Then you drive off. Okay. Right. So in terms of protection, um, it's one of the interventions that um, we put in place. Okay. And obviously, I told you about the control. So this entrance is actually a security control. Okay. The, this particular one. Yes. Here. Oh. Okay. So it depends on how they want to um, automate it. Okay. Whether by by um, card, okay. whether by someone sitting here and pressing a knob and all that. So you can't easily flood in here. You need some sort of um, credentials. Yes, before even to come through here, you can't. So that is one of the interventions you put in here as well. You come through here. So I mentioned you drive your lights. Try to switch them. Try to switch all of them. See the ones that you can switch on this with them. So, like this one, you see, this is a doping. Okay, a doping control. facility. Okay. So you enter here, you wait, and then they take the samples here. Oh, right. So you enter, you wait, they okay. call, then they so take the doping the room. Yes, yes. Which is a critical space, so it has a, a, a toilet in there. Yeah. And this is the warm up area. So we're going to put artificial grass here. That is the change, changing rooms. We will go there right now. But once you come out of there, you need a space for some sort of warm up before you go onto the pitch. So we're going to put artificial turf in. If you look here, this is the refuge room. Oh, I told you to open all these doors. This is a refuge room, and it comes with okay. its own washroom and all that. So there's no interference with the refuge. So these are the changing rooms. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's big enough to put lockets any how you want to put them. Okay. Yeah. And obviously with the center is yeah. Okay. And then fun as well as the backup. So there will be demarcation for the away team and the home team? No. So what you see here, mm -hmm. we have another one at the other, at the other, other side. side. Oh, okay. Okay, so home so, and away. So, I mean, if you look at it, some, some stadiums, they yeah. treat the home. Yeah. Sep Sep well, yeah. They, they treat them more than the away. Yeah. But for, <laughs> our, for us, we, we, are, we are for quality, fair play. Quality, fair play. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever facility you see here is the same thing that our team side. Okay. was to enjoy. So you have the coach coach's office. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then also what we did is to put in a security door here. So this one goes straight to the bus. Okay. Right. Post game. Post game. Or pre game. Post. Okay. Both ways. It depends okay. on the security okay. at hand. Okay. But from here post, straight straight you assess your bus. Okay. You don't have go to go through, through there. So all from the, the change rooms okay. straight into the oh, bus. Okay. So yeah. Um yeah. In the event that the supporters want to vent their spleen before they realize. Around, yes, no, you are gone. <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's also one intervention. Okay. And obviously the kids store where they can put their JCs and all that. And this is a physio area. Okay. For massaging. Yeah, for massaging yeah. and all that. Yeah. They can do that. And then, um, the one you put your things in. And then here. So because of the, the elevation. That's not what because of the elevation, we had to bring this yeah. up so that we can get a, the gravity for the soil oh, water. The we can get the gravity for the soil water into the septic tanks. So this is a, these are change rooms. You can see the urinals. Okay. You can see the hand wash basins. Okay, so that's the urinal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, for here, we have enough WC units. Enough of them. Okay, water closets, yeah. okay. Yeah, about eight of them. Okay. Yeah. And then this side, your light here is able to burn. And then you have this is the shower area. Here. So we have enough of them as well. Yeah. So we have about one, two, three, four, five. So about ten shower spaces. Wow. Yeah. Ten shower yeah, spaces. Ten, yeah. Enough for, for everyone. Yeah. yeah. So after after game, there's no need. <laughs> one waiting for the other. It's a, it's a lot of shower spaces here. So like I said, it's, it's a mirror at the other side. So okay. both are way team, home team. Okay, so we are done, right? That storage. So we are going up as well. Okay. Yeah. To the presidential and what have you. First aid yeah, treatment first aid, room. First aid, yeah. Okay. You have um, the March Commissioner. Okay, the March Commissioner's room. Yeah, March Commissioner. Yeah. And then same space, you have the change rooms there. Okay. The warm up area. Okay, so a replica of what we yes. saw on the other exactly. side. Exactly. So we can. So we're we moving to the presidential, the presidential area. area. So 
UI side yeah. indicated earlier for the presidential, we we put in glass all over here. Okay. Right. So between this and that is controlled. Okay. So this is a double layer glass. Okay. Yeah. So between this side and here is oh. controlled. Okay. So people can easily come in through there. Okay. If you come in through this way, so that's why it's about 13 seats um, for that. Okay. If you come in through here, it's more like a stretching area. Okay. Right. We we'll put some seats here. And it's just going to be something like that. Okay. And then you come here. You have a launch. Oh, okay. Presidential launch. This is a presidential launch. Yes. Whoa. This is where they have yeah, the, the yes. small chops. Yes. And then there's a washroom okay. there as well. Right. But like I mentioned earlier on, at every point in time, you can uh, you can combine the VVIP and the presidential area because these doors, you can close them actually. You can close this door okay. and it takes you away from okay. the VVIP IP, seats. Okay. But you can also open them so okay. they can also come okay. uh, this way. Sorry. So this is the washroom for the VVIP. Okay. You, have, you have female look and then you have male okay. with all the... So you are now sending them okay. to the toilets as well. Okay. Yeah. For officials. For officials. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the other wing is also the other washroom for the VVIP. This okay. way. Okay. Okay. At that side. Okay. So let's go up. Then I'll show you something in the stands. And then I'll have it. So this floor is this side entirely for, for the press, like I mentioned. Okay. TV, radio, newspaper. Okay, so this is the media tribune. Yes. For radio, TV, and uh, all the media yes, works. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you come this way. This is the control room. As you can see, the panels are all there. That's the control room. So that's the control room for TVs and all broadcasting. TVs. Yes. Okay. This is also another office meeting room. So the washrooms too are there for the media. Both ways. Okay. This so this is the washroom yeah. for the media. Yeah. Okay. So it's at the other wing as well. And then you come this way. Okay, so this is briefing. the conference press, room yeah, for press, press conferences. conferences okay. Conferences and all that. Okay. And then the washrooms. Okay. Also. So there's enough washroom for them everywhere. Once you have accreditation and you come up here, you, I think you'll be you comfortable. Enjoy, you enjoy yourself. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so let's look at the, the stands. I'll show you a few things there. Okay. And then we speak a little bit about the outside. Okay. And then uh, some other little. You see, in terms of, like I said, uh, the whole space here is VIP, but it depends on how you categorize them. Mm -hmm. There is still that kind of uh, blockade. If you check there, mm -hmm. you, you cannot come from 
the VIP into the the presidential the lounge. VV okay. IP. Okay. Right? Because that's and they have different or separate entrances. Okay. You understand it? And then obviously the presidential also have a different entrance, entrance and exit. So that's the kind of um, arrangement. arrangement that we have done here. Okay. If you go that side too, we've actually also made ramps there for physically challenged to be able to assess the stadium. Okay. And also, I mean, in terms of operation-wise, dedicating the front seats at that side, so they can they can oh. just ramp in. Oh. And then. Um, so um, our disabled brothers can, and sisters can, have been catered yes, for exactly. as well. They can they can come in here. So in terms of water, so up there you see those tanks, right? So the water tanks. The water tanks. That's going to feed the washrooms. And we have about eight of those ones. Uh, is it eight? Yes, eight. eight. Three down, three down. Yeah. Uh, four down, four top. Yeah, so each each tank is about um, 10,000 10, liters. Right, so you have about 8,000 liters. That's enough for uh, one game. And then it's being fed by the, the, the Ghana water. They can also feed by pumping in. In terms of water for managing the, the grass, we have underground tanks that traps rainwater. Okay. So we, are, we can use both rainwater and portable water. And what we've done here is we've put high pressure pumps in there and the pitch also has sprinklers. So there's no need to come use hose. You switch on the pump and the sprinklers are actually positioned. There's some in the center, some at the edges. There are some that spray 90 degrees, some that spray 180 degrees and some that spray 360 degrees so that at every point they spray and then meet each other. So the storage tanks are at the bottom, but we're trapping a lot of the rain to fill those tanks. And it also serving as a fire uh, fighting uh, a water point for, for, for the stadium. Yeah. So wow. basically that is in the facility you see there, we're going to renovate that and then also... You mean the, the office complex? Yeah, the, this side. We're going to renovate that. Okay, well, and we're then, giving the induction. And then um, you have um, some sort of indoor games, more offices, and other facilities that um, they, they might um, use for. So more of indoor games and, okay. and offices that would augment the operation of uh, the stadium. The stadium. And um, you look out, we've made provision for parking as well. So both wings, we've done pavement. That side, that side, if you look at the ground there, the church side there, we've done a lot of work. Putting controls so that you don't just get in and park. They can check your vehicle, they can check you before you go in and park. So those are some of um, the things that... Um, and then we also have um, an automatic genset. We have almost about... Um, 40 kVA power wow. and, so, and um, it's, it's automatic right so in terms of um, power provision power, once power goes off it kicks in so we are we are providing the stadium with those gensets and then also have a, a fully dedicated transformer for the for the stadium so basically <laughs> if you want to go on I'm sure we are going to finish <laughs> but um, I think we've, we've covered enough of the things that um, we, we're looking at. And then even the, the ticket boot and the turnstiles, I mean, those are all in place as well. So it's, it's properly managed. It's properly managed, yes. So basically, that is, that is, Maybe. basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, yes. Mr. Roger. Adama. Roger Adama. Mr. Roger Adama. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you so much. So, viewers, Mr. Roger Adama took time to take us through the various facilities here at the TNA Park. Come March 2024, uh, when the commissioning will be done, I'm sure it will be a delightful sight to behold when hopefully Mediama will play its first game on this wonderful stadium. Stay tuned. So this is uh, Takwa TNA Park, upgraded heavily by the Goldfields Ghana Foundation at a cost of 16 million US dollars as part of its effort to improve livelihood in its areas of, of operation Goldfields Ghana Foundation 
invested heavily in renovating or upgrading the TNA park. It started about three years ago and uh, it was estimated that by the end of this year the project will be completed. But for COVID and the fact that one of the workers died on site, the project, um, co the completion time has been extended to March 2024. And uh, it is expected that by March 2024, it will be commissioned. It will serve as the sports stadium for the entire community in, in, in general and the um, media mass sporting club in particular. So it is a public facility that will be assessed by the public for events. But of course, Mediama, being the only premiership team based in Takwa, would have the advantage of using this venue as its home venue for eight matches. Originally, the TNA Park had a capacity of just 400, but it's been upgraded to 10,400-seater capacity stadium that meets international standards. Every international event could be hosted here, uh, either FIFA or CAF, by what I have seen um, through my interaction with the contractors and the engineers on site. We've been invested in the areas of um, health, education, water, sanitation, and sports. This will be one of the flagship products of Goldfields Ghana Foundation. And we believe it will go a long way to support the development of Ghana football. This is Dan Kukuyabua from the TNA Stadium.